ஹாய் கேட்ஸ் எப்படி இருக்கீங்க எல்லாரும் நீங்க எல்லாரும் நல்லா இருக்கீங்கன்னு நினைக்கிறேன் ஸோ இன்னைக்கு உங்களுக்காக ஒரு இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங்கான செஷன் காத்துக்கிட்டு இருக்கு இன்னைக்கு நம்ம என்ன பார்க்க போறோம்னா ஒரு சேலஞ்சிங்கான டிஃபிகல்டான சுச்சுவேஷன் நம்ம லைஃப்ல வந்தா அதை எப்படி ஹேண்டில் பண்றதுன்னு பைபிள் இதை பத்தி என்ன சொல்லுதுன்னு நம்ம பார்க்க போறோம் இன்னைக்கு உங்களுக்காக நிறைய பாட்டு மெமரி வேர்ஸ் கிராஃப்ட் ஸ்டோரி இதெல்லாம் அதை பத்தி தான் இருக்க போகுது ஸோ பார்த்துக்கலாமா ஒரு சின்ன ப்ரேயர் பண்ணி ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணலாம் சரியா லார்ட் ஜீசஸ் தேங்க்யூ ஃபார் திஸ் பியூட்டிஃபுல் டே இன்னைக்கு நாங்க எல்லாரும் வேர்ச்சுவலா சண்டே ஸ்கூலுக்காக கேதர் பண்ண ஹெல்ப் பண்ணிருக்கீங்க ஜீசஸ் அதுக்காக ரொம்ப நன்றி டீச் அஸ் ஹவு டு சி அவர் ப்ராப்ளம்ஸ் அண்ட் ஃபேஸ் தெம் அக்கார்டிங் டு யோர் வேர்ட் டுடே லார்ட் இன் ஜீசஸ் ஸ்வீட் நேம் வி ப்ரே ஆமேன் my wrestling and in my doubts in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea whoa you are the peace in my troubled sea in the silence you won't let go in the questions your truth will hold your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea whoa you are the peace in my troubled sea my lighthouse my lighthouse shining in the darkness i will follow you to show
எல்லாம் விட்டுடுங்க கவலை எல்லாம் விட்டுடுங்க உங்க கவலை எல்லாத்தையும் அவர் மேல போட்டுடுங்க ஏசப்பாவ 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 கரப்பிடுங்க கவலை எல்லாம் விட்டுடுங்க This is the story of Caleb and what we can learn from his life. 
The Israelites were in the wilderness of Paran and Moses was their leader. One day the Lord told Moses to send a few Israelites into the land of Canaan. Canaan was the land that God had promised to give the Israelites one day. The Lord told Moses to select 12 leaders from the 12 tribes of Israel. After Moses did that, he gave them the following instructions. Go not through the Negev and see what the land is like. Are the people strong or are they weak? Are there many people or just a few? Is the land good or is it bad? Is the soil fertile or is it poor? Do the towns have walls or are they open camps? Are there many trees? And also, since it was the season for harvesting the first ripe grapes, Moses told them to bring back a few samples of crop. So the twelve Israelites set out for Canaan and explored it for forty whole days. And in a valley, they find some grapes. They cut down a single cluster of grapes, which was so huge that two Israelites had to carry it on a pole between them. They also brought back some pomegranates and figs. So they returned back to Moses, Aaron and the other Israelites. And this is the report that ten of them gave. It is a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. But the people living there, they are too powerful. We saw giants and the towns are large and fortified. And the Canaanites are not the only ones living there. There are other people too, like the Amalekites, the Hittites, the Jebusites and the Amorites. But the report that Caleb and Joshua gave was completely different. Caleb was the son of Jephunneh from the tribe of Judah and Joshua was the son of Nun from the tribe of Ephraim. They tried to quiet the people and said, Let's go at once to take the land. We can certainly conquer it. But the other ten men disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are much stronger than we are. And then they spread this bad report among all the Israelites. The land we explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw were huge. They were giants and we felt like just grasshoppers next to them. And they even assumed that this is what the Canaanites thought of them. Hearing all this bad report, the whole community of Israel starts weeping aloud. They cried all night and their voices rose in great protest against Moses and Aaron. If only we had died in Egypt, they said, or even in the wilderness. Why is the Lord taking us to this country to have us all die in battle? They assumed that their wives and children would be carried off as plunder. They guessed that it would be better for them to return back to Egypt. They plotted among themselves to choose a new leader and do just that. Hearing all this, Joshua and Caleb are very upset. They tear their clothing and tell the other Israelites that the land they explored was a wonderful land and if the Lord was pleased with them, He would certainly bring them to it. They try to convince them, saying, Do not rebel against the Lord and don't be afraid of the people of this land. They are only helpless prey to us because we are God's children and we have His protection with us always. Hearing all this good report, the whole community wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb. Just then, the Lord's glorious presence appeared. He wanted to destroy all the Israelites immediately, but then Moses prayed on their behalf. The Lord declared that not even one of these people would enter that land or even see it. But this is what the Lord told about Caleb. My servant Caleb has a different attitude than the others have. He has remained loyal to me. The Lord said that he would bring him into the land that he explored. This is the instruction that the Lord gave Moses regarding the other Israelites. He told them to turn around and not go into the land of Canaan. Tomorrow they had to set out for the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. So this is where the Israelites' 40-year-long wilderness journey started. One day of exploring the land of Canaan became one year of roaming in the wilderness. What can we learn from this story? 
though all the twelve Israelite leaders went to the same place, saw the same thing for forty days, there are stark differences in their reports. The first one was given by ten of them, and the second by Caleb and Joshua. The first report was given by seeing the land, its people, and their enormity with their physical, worldly eyes. The second report was given by seeing through eyes of faith, seeing beyond the visible and hoping in what is not tangible. The ten depended on strength in numbers and power in armies, but the two knew that only God's spirit was enough to charge ahead, and that is why the ten people wanted to run away from the battle, whereas the two wanted to run towards the battle and inherit the land. The majority forgot that God is able to deliver what he promised no matter the circumstance or difficulty. However, Caleb and Joshua trusted the unshakable promises of an unchanging God. Fear of the enemy's size and number had filled the minds of the people who gave the first report, whereas a zeal to overcome the enemy with God's strength had overtaken Caleb and Joshua. The first report conveyed a negative approach to obstacles and thus discouraged everyone who heard it. However, the second one had a positive approach and was filled with positivity and energy and charged up its hearers. The more and more the bad reports spread, more people were convinced to take the popular yet negative side, whereas Caleb and Joshua stood for the right thing, though it was unpopular. because they knew that god was on their side the reward was that the 10 israelites who spread the bad report were struck with the plague and did not get to see the promised land but caleb and joshua later possess canaan and it passes on to their descendants as a blessing so you see it is very very important to have the eyes of faith to see the impossible be assured of christ strength in you Remember that our battles are not our own but God's. Be positive even in a negative world. Trust God's promises because he is faithful. Have an undying zeal for the Lord because he loves us very much. And finally, stand for what is right even if you are standing alone.
So, parting la kids, Caleb and Joshua are brave and courageous. Just before entering the promised land, the Israelites got very scared. Ivlo naal alaga lead panitun the big strong God avanga side irkrada marande poitanga. But Caleb and Joshua saw with their eyes of faith. Faith na na Hebrews 11 la alaga potrka. Faith is the assurance of things. Which we cannot see. If we have trust in God, we need to remember that if we have a Jesus in the problems, He will take care of me. He will help me to overcome the problem. We need to remember and we need to keep praising God. Next, Proverbs 3 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all that you do and He will show you which path to take. Ibn Ur Alagana verse So challenges or difficulties number life la varamoda. Let us not run to people, but let us run to God. Nama knowledge, nama skills, nama talents, nama yen the strength depend panalume, we might fail. But one foolproof method is we need to trust God with all our heart. And second, we need to pray to God and ask Him what to do. Jesus, what shall I do now? How do I proceed? Abdina God kita kam ikekamoda, our correct ana vali namlaka kami par. Evlo ura alagana speaking God we have. So we need to keep praising Him. So next time, unga life lo or problem or mother, learn to see it with your eyes of faith and to trust God with all your heart. Cheri, or chinna prayer pani muchillama. Lord Jesus, thank you for this beautiful lesson that you have taught us today, O oh Lord. Help us to keep trusting in you in spite of our difficulties, O oh Lord. We know that you love us and you care for us so very much that you will never, never let us go, Jesus. Thank you for your promise. Help us to see things with the eyes of faith and to emerge victorious with you by our side. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Did you know? This world is a real spiritual battlefield. 
our neighborhood, our home, and our school are the battlegrounds we fight in. And who is our enemy? Yes, the devil. The devil comes to steal our joy, kill our peace, and destroy our lives. And how does he do that? By making us do the things that God doesn't want us to do. But do we have to be afraid, kids? Absolutely not. Why? Because God is on our side and He asks us to be strong. He also provides us with what we need to fight this battle, the armor of God. So what is this armor? Is this like a knight's armor? Well, kind of. But this armor is so neat. It's like having special powers that are invisible. Now I'm sure you might be wondering how to use it. Let's take tips from a few of our brave soldiers in Christ. Word of Spirit is the Word of God. To be a Christian is to be a soldier of Christ. The sword is both an offensive and defensive weapon used by soldiers. Paul defines God's Word as a sword in Ephesians 6, 6 verse 17. God refers to His Word as a double-edged sword in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The purpose of Sword of Spirit, which is the Bible, is to make us strong and withstand the evil onslaughts of Satan the enemy. Christian soldiers need to use the power of God's word to get spiritual strength and be mature soldiers for Christ in fighting against the temptations in this evil world we live in. When Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by devil, Jesus used God's word to defend and refute Satan's temptations. God created us by His words. He healed people by His words. God's words are powerful, active and living. In Psalms 119 verse 105, David says, Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light on my path. God's words are sweeter than honey. I will read the word of God every day Meditate it, follow it in my life, and be a soldier of Christ. In Ephesians chapter 6, Paul wrote that we should put on the armor of God so that we can take a stand against the devil's scheme. The sword of the Spirit is the word of God. In Hebrews 4 12, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double edged sword. I will use this word of God in my daily life by keeping myself away from my sin. The head of salvation is another part of the armor of God that Paul discusses in Ephesians 6. The helmet of salvation leads to eternal life and helps to overcome temptation and sins. Shield of Faith 1 John 5 4 says that we can overcome the world by our faith. In the Bible, there are many people who showed their faith in God. We read that Abraham was known as the father of faith because by faith, when God tested him, he obeyed to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. We also read that by faith, Joshua announced the sun to stand still and it did stand still. Similarly, we too should do everything with faith in God. So, even during this lockdown period, let us take up the shield of faith which can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Belt of Truth Vital is a belt to every soldier. All tools of battle were hung on this belt. The, this belt also held the soldier's rope together. To the Christian soldier, a belt of truth means that we are surrounded by honesty, truthfulness, integrity, and sincerity that every part of our life is governed by truth. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15, Saint Paul tells us to stand firm in the readiness of the gospel 
of peace. What is the gospel of peace? Is it a brand or something? Well, the gospel of peace, according to me, in the simplest words, is the news of what happens when we trust in God. By having such strong faith in Jesus, we always leave everything in His mighty hands. So when troubles come, when children bully you in school, when you have exams and homework and assignments all piled up, you will or can never be disheartened, never be sad or discouraged. You know why? Because Jesus has given you His peace that passeth all understanding. Why do we need our feet? Well, the first two most important things that come to mind and number one, to stand, and number two, to walk. We just discussed about standing firm in his faith. So what about walking? Not only should we stand firm, we should also spread the gospel of peace. We should tell about Jesus Christ, what he has done for us, and about his peace that nothing else in this world can give us. How can we small children do that? Well, we can do that by not fighting with our friends or classmates, and even if someone fights with us, we should never fight back. In these small little ways, we can tell through our actions about the gospel of peace. So will you all do that? Now may the Lord of peace give you peace. So kids, stand firm in what you've been given. Do not fear anymore. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Ephesians 6 verse 1. Thank you. The bread of life, John 6 35. Memory verse, John chapter 6, verse 35. Jesus is the bread of life. Thank you.
पैरेबल ऑफ द टैलेंट्स मेमोरी वर्स कोलेशियंस चैप्टर 3 वर्सेस 23 24 व्हाटएवर यू डू वर्क एट इट विद ऑल योर हार्ट एज वर्किंग फॉर लॉर्ड नॉट फॉर ह्यूमन मास्टर्स सिंस यू नो दैट यू विल रिसीव एन इनहेरिटेंस फ्रॉम द लॉर्ड एज अ रिवार्ड इट इज द लॉर्ड क्राइस्ट यू आर सर्विंग थैंक यू Yes, he lifted me up, I know. He reached out his hands and lifted me up, and that's why I love him so. I love him more and more. I love him more and more. And when I stand upon the other shore, I praise him more and more. And when I stand upon the other shore, I praise you more and more. But if you fail to do this, you will be sinning against the Lord and you will make be sure that your sin will find you out. Numbers 32 verse 23. Thank you. Whoever dwells in the shadow of the most high will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. My God in whom I trust. Surely He will save me from the flowers man and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with, with His feathers and find, and you will find under His wings. You will find His refuge and faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not. You will not fear the, the terror of night nor the nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor, nor the plague that destroys at midday. Nor, uh, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will not fear. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, The Lord is my refuge, and, and you make the the most high your dwelling. No harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angel concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will not tread on the lion and the cobra. You will not trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will uh, satisfy him and show him the salvation. Thank you. You fail to do this, you will be sinning against the Lord and you will be sure that your sin will find you off. Numbers 32, 23. Thank you. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4 to 7. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It does not get easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. 